Alrighty, happy Monday, everybody. And I, I really like it when all my guests are already here in the lobby and then I know they're ready to go, even though like Jake's not on until later. <laughs> uh, hope you had a good weekend. Mother Nature finally showed up. Hello. It was a beautiful uh, weekend and uh, I was making sure, well, I put in a call. I'll tell you that right now. I said, Mother Nature, come on. We got Rib Fest coming up. We need to have some nice weather. And um, she cooperated. Look at that. It was a fantastic weekend, uh, which was great because last year the weather was right. So um, this year, Mother Nature cooperated and thousands of people came out to Hiawatha for the Northern Heat Rib Series, Sarnia Ribbon Craft Beer Festival. You know how many times I said that over the weekend? Uh, it was fantastic weather. Lots of we had some local entertainment and we had some tribute bands, uh, Way Too Hip and uh way too or not um, we ain't petty sorry uh tom petty tribute and the acdc tribute like i'm talking like these guys were acdc they had it right down to a science it sounded like them it was awesome oh yeah and there were ribs too and uh 15 different craft beer uh folks down there with the uh, lots of beer and uh, the deep fried everything, right? So it was good. So it was good to see them back. And I know they'll be back again next year. And if you miss this rib fest, there's another rib fest, the Sarnia Kinsman rib fest uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. They'll be down at Centennial Park. So there you go. There's uh, ribs everywhere, right? Okay. So thanks to the Northern Heat Rib Series for having me out there as well. I hope you had a good weekend, right? Because uh, there was certainly lots going on. I know uh saturday night the trues were in town as well for the do it for sarnia campaign in support of blue water health and i think dan edwards is like really close to hitting his goal which is fantastic and i've seen the trues about six seven times i know some people have seen them about 30 times and from different people they said to me it's the best true show they've ever seen so there you go if they can get any better uh, that's fantastic. And uh, what else was going on? Om Janong uh, was having their uh, yearly powwow, and they were celebrating uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day on the 21st, which was fantastic as well. Fireworks just over here. Boom, boom, boom. Right there in your face. It was awesome. So lots happening. It's nice to see lots of things happening here in Sarnia Lampton. So uh, never lack of anything to do, as I like to say. Uh, something new that has come about, and we had Eve Morgan on here a couple of weeks ago to talk about it, is the Bright's Grove Market is happening in Bright's Grove uh, on the uh, Kenwick on the Lake. So, uh, wow, right on the water there and the market and it's all local foods and local music as well. So that's every Wednesday, local food, local music, local fun. Uh, Kenwick on the Lake for the Bright's Grove Market. That's every Wednesday from 4 to 7.30 p.m., right? Maybe a little bit longer. And uh, I think you mentioned they have some wine out there as well. So sounds like just a fun, sounds like a social event. And then, oh, yeah, there's food too. So that's good. All right. Every Wednesday happening that. And when, Wednesday is a popular day. Uh, live open mic music down at uh, our friends down at Village Gardens. And my friend Doug Fergie Ferguson is always there playing the tunes and jamming away. And you're welcome to go up and uh, sing along with them or bring your guitars in. It's an open mic session again every Wednesday, 9 o'clock down at Village Gardens. I tried to, I didn't get in there last week. And uh, of course, Doug said that, that was one of the best weeks they had. So uh, it keeps growing and growing. It's a place to be on a Wednesday night. So I'll be there this week, Doug. I promise you that. All right. Uh, every once in a while, I still do karaoke. They talk me into it still. And this time I'm going to be at the Lake Point Grill House and Lounge. And if you don't know what that is, that's formerly the Chippican. And uh, I've had lunch there many times and it's fantastic. Uh, did karaoke on a Saturday afternoon uh, about a month ago. Had a great turnout. And so they have entertainment now every Friday and Saturday evening. Lots of local bands. And they've uh, decided they want me to come in and do some karaoke. An early finish, an early start and an early finish. Uh, somebody said to me, why so early? Said, well, so I'm going to be 50 next week. 
wow, how did that happen? When I started karaoke, I was like 21, and uh, my friends were all in their 20s, right? And now we're all older, so we have to start early and finish early. We can't stay out as late. Sometimes we still try to stay out late, but we regret it the next morning. Anyway, I'll be at Lake Point Girl House and Lounge uh, from 7.30 to 10.30, just three hours of karaoke, just enough time for you to come out and have some fun, have some delicious food, and yes, they have the beverages there as well, and you still got time to go do something else afterwards if you want, right, because there's lots going on, all right, so I hope you'll come down uh, and sing, sing me a song, right, that'd be cool. Canada Day, how old's Canada? Who knows how old Canada is? I see Dom. Uh, yes, you're right, Dom. I saw your lips moving. <laughs> Canada is going to be 152 years young. Um, that makes it 100 and anyway, I'm going to be 50. So Canada is older than me. So there uh, I'll be broadcasting live the Canada Day Parade. Once again, I'll be down on the corner to the entrance of Canada Park. At least that's where they usually plot me down so i'll be there broadcasting live uh from 11 30 just before 11 30 i'll go live to talk to you for a little bit and then the parade will come by and i want to say thanks to our friends at blue water power who sponsor us to be able to bring you the live broadcast uh, every year so thanks blue water power for that sponsorship and <clears throat> here's one of the here's one of the reasons why i started uh live streaming the parades here in town because i do the the canada Day parade the christmas parade the labor day parade um some people in this city just can't get out and enjoy the parades. And it's not always on, on cable. Uh, and sometimes it is not everybody has cable. So if you know somebody, uh, what well, was actually my mother, who's at Marshall Golden Manor, that gave me the idea. Um, they have these big community rooms in nursing homes. And somebody there can plug in a laptop to the television on the big screen and put everybody in the room and enjoy the parade. It helps. Uh, my intent is that it helps keep people in the community who can't get out and enjoy these things still connected to our community. Cause I think it's important that we, we include those people. Right. Uh, and sometimes even like my friend Dom, it isn't always uh, easy for him to get out in his wheelchair. It's just not always accessible or it's too hot. And if he needs to get somewhere fast, it just, it's not always easy for everybody. So, uh, if you know somebody who could appreciate watching the parade and enjoy that, make sure you plug them into the internet and uh, it'll be on my uh, Facebook page on uh, the video show network page, uh, broadcasting live. It'll also be simulcast throughout um, the show page and uh, talking MS page and a whole bunch of others. Right. So we'll be simulcasting it everywhere. So if you can't find it, you're doing something wrong. Uh, so again, <clears throat> and then I'll be down uh, emceeing all the, the shows and everything down at uh, the, the waterfront where they have all the bands and everything. I'll probably have some prizes and stuff. So I'll be all over the place for Canada Day starting at 1130 in the morning. And uh, hopefully it's a nice day, right? We've been pretty lucky. I think last year it rained really hard for about three minutes. <clears throat> and 5,000 people all tried to get under my tent. Yeah. <laughs> it was funny. But uh, Canada Day celebration, 152 years uh, there'll be lots going on, and uh, I'll be sharing some stuff on the Facebook page to tell you about things that are happening, lots of vendors and stuff, too. All right, looking forward to that. Dueling pianos. Have you ever been to one of those dueling pianos? Uh, I've done it in Las Vegas a few times, uh, down at Bally's. <clears throat> Pardon me. And it's a lot, a lot, a lot of fun. And my friend Adam Dumont, who is also uh, the initiator in putting on the Sarnia Sings uh, evening, he decided that dueling pianos would be fun. And he's right. It's going to be fun. Only a hundred tickets. Um, I've already got myself and 10 friends going. We're going to, we're going to take over the place. I think there's only about 15 to 20 tickets left for this. It's $25 a person includes uh, food from the grind is going to be supplying food and it includes your first two drinks. And then after that, you're on your own. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So I, he, he's holding it in the Royal LePage building on the main floor there. And if this goes really well, we see bigger venues. And I know it will go well. And the intent from Adam is to do this once per month around somewhere in town. And we've already talked about where the next one will be. Shh, stay tuned. I can't tell you. I'm not allowed to sign a contract. Anyway, <laughs> dueling pianos uh, on July the 5th next week. So if you want to go to that, there's still time to get some tickets. Uh, you can reach out to Adam Dumont. Or if you want to just send me a private message, I, I'm... 
I bought them. I got them for everybody else. I'm like Ticketmaster apparently. So you can reach out to me, and I'll make sure you get the information on uh, getting the tickets. It's going to be so much fun. There's a few few surprises coming along as well that uh, Adam did share with me um, that I can't tell my friends, but I almost wish he hadn't told me. But it's going to be super fun. So we'll keep you posted on that as well. Dueling piano night for sure. Boxing is coming to town. Well, boxing is in town a lot anyway with the Blue Water Boxing Club. We had Caitlin Clark on here, who's a Canadian, uh, young Canadian champion. Um, and <clears throat> they are hosting their annual banger in the hangar out at the airport. Uh, I was there last year and they hosted to Ireland. And this year they are playing host to boxers all the way from Scotland. Yes, all the way from Scotland. That's happened on July the 20th. Uh, you can get tickets by going to a Blue Water Boxing on Facebook as well. I forget how much they are. I think they're 20 or 25, 20 bucks, something like that. Uh, so it's not expensive. And the place fills up quite well. I will also be live streaming the boxing event. So why would I buy a ticket, Dave? Well, I'll tell you why. Because the live streaming is going to be pay-per-view. You'll have to pay to see it as well. Aha. Uh -huh. So go see it in person or be able to watch it pay-per-view uh, on the Video Show Network as well. So uh, last time was an amazing turnout and uh, in, in the hangar, yes, in one of the hangars out at the airport. Uh, so looking forward to that. And a big shout out to one of my friends, uh, Sarnia Police Officer Steve Weivel is also boxing in this event. So we're the same age. <laughs> <laughs> so 50 year old Steve Weibel decided to be crazy. He's going to be getting in the ring as well. So uh, who wouldn't want to get in there and take on Steve? Weibel? Well, I wouldn't want to get in there and take one. He kicked me with his pinky finger and I'd be done. So uh, way to go. And there's going to be lots of other belts in there as well. So go to Blue Water Boxing Club to find out more about Banger in the Hangar coming to Sarnia July the 20th. Wow. Uh, what else is coming? If you haven't heard yet, you haven't been paying attention. The tall ships are coming to Sarnia August 9th through till the 11th. The Blue Nose 2 is going to be here in town as one of those tall ships. Uh, between eight, it's There's at least eight of them coming to town. It might even be 10, but I know there's for sure eight. Uh, Rob Hardwood, the director of Parks and Rec here for the city of Sarnia, joined us a little while back to give us some insight. He'll be joining us probably the next couple of weeks to talk to us about some of the things that are happening. Some pirates are coming to town. Um, we know that for sure. Artscape and Blue Water Border Fest have collaborated along with the Tall Ships celebration. So Artscape, Blue Water Border Fest, and Tall Ships all happening at the same time. You want to talk about me having a crazy weekend. I'm going to be over here, over here, over here, over here, and then back and forth and doing it all again. I'll be the MC for Blue Water Border Fest all weekend, and I'll be hanging around Artscape as well. And you will see me live from one of the tall ships. I'll be uh, on the ships for the sail-in that is going to be happening as well, uh, and I'll be live streaming from that ship. Something very unique. Really excited for that. You can go online to uh, Ticket Scene. Uh, .ca and just uh, type in Tall Ships and get your tickets online there. Um, you can also just Google Tall Ships Sarnia and their website will come up and a Facebook page as well. This is an amazing opportunity for us to be showcasing where we live here in Sarnia Lambton. And thousands have already purchased their tickets. I think they're going to have more people than they were honestly expecting to arrive for this. Uh, they, they tell me they can go online and see where the tickets were purchased from, etc. People are traveling from all across Canada, and many from the United States are planning their vacations around this event, coming to Sarnia Lambton. What a great thing for our community to showcase uh, uh, what a beautiful community we live in, and great for business here in town as well. The, it's good for the economy here. So congratulations to uh, all of those involved, including, uh, well, the city of Sarnia and uh, Tourism Sarnia Lampton is involved in that as well. And of course, Artscape and Blue Water Border Fest. Speaking of Blue Water Border Fest, you probably already know that the Rock Weekend has been announced with uh, Dennis DeYoung. Uh, Lou Graham from Foreigner is going to be in town. Now I heard, and this is not confirmed, so don't hold me accountable to this, but I heard that the stop, when Lou Graham performs in Sarnia, like this is his final tour. And so far, we have reason to believe that Sarnia is the final stop of his tour. So what happens when the final stop of anybody's tour? It's usually one of the best shows of the whole tour. So if you haven't got your tickets for this, 
Uh, go to bluewaterborderfest.ca to find out all the information. Uh, yeah, salute, Graham. Dennis Young from Styx. Uh, uh, members of Asia and Night Ranger going to be there. And Big Wreck was announced as well as being there on the Friday night. And what's interesting about that, uh, of course, you know, uh, Brian Doherty, formerly of Big Wreck, passed away recently. Uh, $2 of every ticket sold for the Big Wreck concert is being donated to uh, the Canadian Cancer Society. So how awesome is that as well? And I'm sure there'll be some fantastic it'll be an emotional night for big wreck for sure but uh we're excited to uh, have them at blue water border fest this year i can't wait for that that's going to be awesome and if you're a country fan tyler farr is uh been announced as the headliner for the country night on the thursday evening so thursday friday saturday sunday 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 is is blue water border fest and so country night tyler farr and special guest and Local special guest, Scott Maneri and the Barn Burners. Boy, oh boy, those are guys with a lot of energy if you've never seen them perform. So uh, some local music in there, as well as, once again, Tyler Farr headlining the country evening for Blue Water Border Fest, which is happening uh, in August 9th to 11th weekend, along with the uh, Blue Water Border Fest. All right. Nothing to do, eh? I could go on, but we have to move on to our guests here. My next guest, uh, well, I know he, he'll he join me anytime. I'm always happy to have him here. We've been friends for going on 23 years. My friend Dom Fernandez. Hey, Dom, how's it going? Not bad, Dave, yourself? I'm doing fantastic. It's good to have you here joining me today. Um, thank you very much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. I know we, we had you on here, uh, it was probably a month ago. ago. Because uh, you were starting your your page, talking at mess, and we got you set up with a microphone and stuff, and now you're live streaming. How's it going? Um, still a learning curve, but uh, you know, I'm just learning by trial and error. Yeah, well, I hear you, buddy. <laughs> I've been doing that for eight years. Uh, that's how you that's how you get better at it, but. You uh, um, you started this talking MS because obviously, I mean, you have MS and you have had MS for uh, about 16 and a half years, correct? Yeah, it'll be 17 years in January. Yeah. And you started, um, well, you've certainly had your battles along the way. Um, yeah. But you seem to, um, th- this has really changed you, though, as a person. I, I mean, and not aside from the obvious your mindset has really changed from what it used to be. Would you say that's true? I would say my mindset's more on the positive side than it was before. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't let anything get to me, and it takes a lot to get to me. So yeah. if it gets to me, you know, then it's something pretty serious. Yeah. How, how do you um, how do you stay so positive? Because you know, I, I I'm around you. And uh, I've seen some of the things you've gone through and that you just you just seem to pull it out of you somehow. Just, just keep going. Um, I think what helps me keep positive is the fact that uh, I know I have the ability to help others. Mm. And uh, starting the, the uh, page and the group. And the group talking a mess and the talk show talking a mess. So... You know, it, uh, just knowing I'm able to help somebody. Right. I mean, I'd like to talk to somebody who's had MS uh, years more than I have, maybe pick their brains. Because um, that's the only way to learn about MS is talking to somebody who has it. So what kind of, like, you've done a lot of research uh, moving forward as well to to understand uh, MS and what you're dealing with. And you've really educated yourself on MS and the, the different uh, types of that. Cause there's more than one type of MS, right? Yeah, there is actually four. And then there's uh, intermediate ones. Um, there, um, two of them are rare. And unfortunately I was diagnosed with one of the rare ones. I have primary progressive MS. And I have the more aggressive form of primary progressive. So it, it's taken me down quite, quite quickly, as you've noticed over the years. But it doesn't get to me. It is what it is. Yeah. 
Um, easier said than done sometimes. I mean, I know that, and, and you and I've had this discussion where I've said like, I, I don't know how I would handle it if my life changed the way yours has. And, um, there's gotta be a lot of mental health issues that go along with, with dealing with, uh, MS. There is a lot of mental health issues with MS. Uh, MS does have an extremely high suicide rate. Um, I don't know if you, because you are an admin on both the, the group and the page. I don't know if you would seen it. Um, it said that uh, MS patients have um, two to three more times difficulty with mental health um, than normal. Um, right. So, what, so how do you have, so what kind of support uh, do you have? One way of staying positive. Oh, you froze up on me, Dom. Dom, if you can hear me, can you refresh your screen? This happens. It does happen. I think Dom's uh, refresh. So Dom's uh, Facebook page, uh, Talking MS, uh, simply just type in Talking MS. He has a page, and he also has a group uh, that you can, and, and, and it's, while it's geared specifically to talking about the different types of MS or people dealing with MS, or maybe uh, when we say dealing with MS, maybe you don't have MS, but you're having to help with someone who does. Uh, Dom has wanted to create this, I guess, safe space to have uh, conversations about the different types of MS and just support for um, a lot of other chronic illnesses as well. So uh, seek him out there. We'll, we'll, we'll try to see if we can have him come back here. We'll give him a moment. Uh, but talk, talking MS is something that he started uh, just recently. And actually, um, I think it was back in maybe November. He wanted to, uh, he got inspired by Dan Edwards. And oh yeah, there's Tom, we got him back. Uh, Dom was inspired by Dan Edwards, who uh, is also uh, in a wheelchair from a, a, a tragic accident years ago in his life and inspired Dom to be a speaker. There you are, Dom, you're back. Yeah, well, I, I had my picture here. Yours disappeared and uh, did the same thing to me and Stephen on Monday. And oh, there you go. It's just uh, a test. <laughs> uh, it was kind of odd because I still had audio, but neither one of us had a picture. Oh, so, okay. As they say in show business, the show must go on. That's right. I just I got to stall a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was just telling the folks why you started talking MS, and uh, you got inspired to want to be a public ski speaker. You got inspired by Dan Edwards to do that. And that is correct. Dan Edwards is my inspiration. Uh, he's a great guy, um, and he's a go-getter. And that's that's my inspiration. <laughs> Yeah, uh, and the fact that uh, he just uh, reinvigorated something I wanted to do years ago, just never had the gumption to do so. Yeah, well, you did a fantastic job when you, we went down to uh, Rosewood Manor that day, and I remember I came in and live streamed that for you. And I mean, that video itself has had over five thousand views since then. Uh, you're looking more up close to fifty four hundred views now. Oh, there you go. So. I mean, an eye on it, so people are still watching, and uh, you know you've you've become inspiring yourself, honestly. You know, uh, um, to other people around you. Um, uh, yeah, I've, I, I've been told that numerous times, uh, yeah. and, and uh, I had a conversation with somebody else because uh, I've had a lot of people call me their hero, and I told them, you know. Leave the hero aspect to the police officers, uh, uh, fire department, doctors, and so forth. They're the heroes. Uh, if I inspire you, I'm grateful. Uh, but uh, the page and the group is there to uh, help uh, people with MS, their caregivers, um, um, and anybody who uh, knows somebody who has MS and wants to learn. Yeah. Well, you are very consistent too, since we, uh, 
uh, got you a microphone and a webcam there to get you to go live. You 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 typically go live pretty well every day uh, during the week at one thirty in the afternoon, right? Um, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday at one thirty uh, with the talk show, and the other days are usually. Well, it varies. One thirty could be three thirty, right? Um, but um, and sometimes I do impromptu shows. So, uh, and um, um, I want to also let you know you've also been invited as a guest to my friend Cassandra George's barbecue on July fourteenth. Uh, and it's all free. They just ask that you bring a dish and your your own drinks if you're available. I oh, you. when is that? July 13th? Uh, July 14th. I sent it to you uh, in your inbox. July 14th. I'll have to see what I can do. Yeah, it's uh, July 14th. Well, it's normally karaoke that day, but Jennifer can run it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or um, oh, what's his name? Uh, Will. Will. Yep. I forgot about Will. We could we could probably get that covered and looked after. I just look at my calendar. It doesn't look like I have anything else other than that. So uh that'd be a lot of fun. What and 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 your friend Cassandra, she does she have uh what's the connection there? Uh she has rheumatoid arthritis. Right. And it's uh really debilitated her. Uh and she's in consistent pain. So yeah. that's what inspired her to start her group and her page. Yeah. Uh, and her mother helps her with it. Right. Um, actually, uh, my sister and my uh, uh, investment uh, uh, person just uh, just showed up. Um, so I may end up having to cut her interview short. Hi, Dave. Sure oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> Uh, if you come behind me, Dave can see you. There's Hello. You. Yeah, um, and uh, now uh, and uh, something else I would like your if you can get uh, um, put it up. Um, any uh, anyone who's disabled, uh, see if they're eligible for the RDSP. It's called, it, it's the short form for retired disability, uh, retired disability savings plan. Okay. And this is what Glenn's here for with me because I'm changing banks to something that has a bit of a better interest rate on my uh, investment. Right. Well, that's, uh, that's interesting. That'd be something interesting to look into. I think my friend David Noel might know about that. He's yeah. part, he's an investor as well. So, well, I know you've done really well with your your page and your group, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna get you some more reach there. And um, uh, you, you've really like you've inspired me as well because when I'm having a bad day, sometimes I just think, what would Dom do? <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, so 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 don't uh, don't be afraid to pat yourself on the back for that because uh, uh, you're 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 doing the right things and you're keeping that positive frame, and I know uh, reading's a lot uh, a big deal for you, right? Yeah, it is, and I have to do it all online, as you know, because I only have uh, the use of my left arm. So, um, and whenever I go live uh, <laughs> for me to reply to comments, I have to use my left arm. Yeah. And sometimes the viewers see me struggle, but that doesn't stop me. Yeah. Well, I think you're doing fantastic with what you're doing. And uh, I know we're going to see more from you there as well. So uh, yeah, thanks so much for being here again today. I really appreciate you taking some time out, buddy. Oh, not a problem. Thanks for having me, buddy. You're welcome. We'll have you back again soon. And uh, I'll join you on your one of your Talking MS shows as well. Sounds great. Bye I'll for now. Uh, my dear friend, Dom Fernandez, uh, pushing through, talking MS. Um, he's doing a fantastic thing by uh, sharing his personal story and helping others cope with MS as well as other illnesses as well. He's created this safe space for 
uh, people to go and get educated about talking uh, or about multiple sclerosis and just talking about it. And just and sometimes they don't even talk about that. They just uh, have conversations, right? So uh, my next guest is also somebody who's inspiring as well. And uh, oh, there he is. He's back. We're going to get my friend Graham Holmes uh, to join us up here next. Graham, how are you today? Good, Dave. How are you, man? I'm doing fantastic. I know you're you are one busy fella. I've been going crazy this summer, but uh, it's all for the good. Uh, so uh, no complaints. Yeah, let's talk about Empower Play um, and just kind of remind everybody what is Empower Play and its mission. Yeah, so Empower Play uh, was founded in 2014 uh, to help remove financial barriers associated with uh, starting as youth becoming successful in athletics and arts. So, you know, we're, we're kind of like the jumpstart uh, who deals with the uh, house league grassroots players. And uh, we, uh, we take them uh, when they have the great potential to go and play the competitive levels. And we try to help finance, uh, finance that for them. So uh, we want all kids to have the same opportunities uh, in athletics and arts as, as anybody, regardless of their financial uh, situations. Right. Well, and that's really a big part of sports, unfortunately, is it's expensive. My uh, my next guest, Jake Chersky, will probably agree with that. Sports can be expensive. Uh, uniforms and travel and training and just uh, the equipment that somebody, depending on the sport, needs to wear, right? So what what uh, what inspired you to start this? No, well, Dave, uh, just growing up, we didn't have a lot of money, man, so... We, uh, I wanted to play travel sports. I had to get a job and work. I was lucky enough to find one that uh, was flexible enough to let me play some basketball. Um, you know, just uh, coaching throughout uh, throughout the years, I've seen kids fall through the cracks endless times because their parents just don't uh, don't have the the finances to to really put them up into the higher levels. So, um, you know, I wanted to give back to Carnia. I wanted to do something that uh, that didn't exist just yet and uh and that's why we're here yeah well and uh you how many how many years have you had in power play now it's been five years uh uh yeah about five years now uh we, we kicked off selling t-shirts and having a launch party and now we're here running two events per year and and uh we just launched our equipment exchange program um and uh, that's that's going to kick off i'm sure real soon so so the equipment exchange program what's that what's that about so if you go to exchangeitnow.com, you can actually uh, – we have an online inventory of used sporting equipment that people have donated to us. And, uh, you know, the, the highest price we'll pay for anything is $25 with an exchange. Um, so you want to exchange your old equipment uh, for your new equipment. That's for a really good pair of skates, you know, for a men's pair of skates. For any kids' equipment, it's 5 bucks. Um, so you trade in their old equipment, whether it be cleats, shoulder pads, shin pads, anything. Uh, we clean it up. Uh, we stick it in our inventory, take a picture of it, put it online, and, uh, and we charge a $5 exchange fee. So you're not even paying for the equipment. You can buy the equipment outright as well for double the cost. So 10 bucks even for, you know, a little pair of skates or a pair of cleats or shin pads or, you know, anything, any sports. Uh, we, have, uh, we have all sorts of equipment, hundreds of items, and uh, people can use that to, to purchase online. We'll bring it to your door and exchange the equipment for you for, for a really low price, so. Wow, what a great idea! Because I'm sure there's, uh, uh, I know, I, hey, I got a set of golf clubs sitting in the garage that I'm probably never going to use again. Because <laughs> I I golfed for four years, and when I realized I never ever broke a hundred, I'm not a quitter, but I know when I'm beat. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's not my thing either, Dave. Don't worry. <laughs> so well, these- absolutely, it's a great program we have. We're going to use it as a consistent revenue stream for Empower Play. 100 of every exchange goes to the kids in the community. We're 100 volunteer based, so that's really important, you know. And do you do you have a group of volunteers that's uh, assisting you on a regular basis? We do. So we have a board of uh, about five people, um, and uh, and we all work hard. We meet once a month and uh, and try to put things together. So um, at every event and anything from the equipment exchange uh, that we do is is all you know the five people on the board uh, and uh, and some other external volunteers as well that you know who we can bring out and, and get a, get to help us out. So we always need volunteers. Okay. All right. Well, especially for uh, what's this you got coming up here? Um, geez, just in a couple of weeks, right? Yeah. It's uh, it's coming up quick. A tribute to summer. Uh, that's our concert that, uh, that we're throwing uh, last year. We had, uh, um, 
Yasker's Farm play. This year we have Full Petty Fever, so Tom Petty uh, tribute, and uh, the only sanctioned Metallica tribute bands in Canada, um, uh, the Sandman, and and they're both really great high energy bands coming to Valley Axe, um, and you can get tickets online at Ravelry.ca. Um, along with that, during the day we have Battle for the Bay, the volleyball tournament. Uh, we uh, we have a great time with that year after year. If you register for volleyball, you get uh, free dinner by Bain's Barbecue, and you get uh, um, uh, free tickets to the concert. So if you want to make a whole day party out of it, it's a, it's a great time. It's recreational. It's just for fun. Um, we have great prizes to give away, but um, the you know the competitiveness is uh, is not always there. It's uh, it's a really fun tournament. It's uh, co-ed, and uh, and people have a great time year after year. We get the DJ playing up um, every year, and he just plays great tunes and. You know, people sit back, relax, enjoy the summer, and that's what this is all about. Well, this is a, a full day event. It sounds like a lot of fun and and, and a lot of ha- like morning till night kind of thing. And uh, these tribute bands that you have coming in here, they're um, they're not local, but they're they're these are top notch tribute bands. Yeah, they're uh, top notch talent for sure. Uh, we're really proud to have them come and uh, and join us. Uh, like I said, they're really high energy. They're very talented. Um, you know, it's a great price. Uh, 15 bucks in advance uh, on rivalry.ca and uh, these guys will give you a show for the for the money so uh, concert starts at seven doors open at six and uh, it'll go to about 11 30 so right so you don't have to be in the volleyball tournament to go to the show you can just buy tickets. no 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 yeah you just you can buy tickets for the show separate I'm just saying if you're in the volleyball tournament you get the tickets for free so it's just an added value to you uh, to come out and play volleyball and have a good time all day as well so yeah now Aside from this, and this is obviously one of your big signature events of the year to, to raise money uh, for Empower Play, but aside from this, what other kinds of things do you have to do throughout the year? Because money uh, you know, money isn't everything, but it's up there with oxygen. <laughs> you need it. Um, what's, uh, what, what other events are you putting on throughout the year to, to finance Empower Play? Um, actually, you know, we got a golf tournament coming up in September. Um, so between this and the golf tournament, that's our main revenue stream, along with the equipment exchange. Uh, program and I just wanted to to give a shout out to uh, Mick Jackson who uh, decided to sponsor this event and the golf tournament as well. Um, so it's now the uh, the Asante uh, tribute to summer, um, uh, Asante Wealth Management with Mick Jackson. Uh, so he's a uh, he's a huge help to us, a huge donor, and and we really appreciate his help. So yeah, well, and Mick's a big sports fan too, so he can uh, really appreciate, I'm sure, what it is that's what that you're doing. Um, how do you how do you keep track of all of this? I mean, this is uh, uh, and and how do you keep track of all this? And are there other kind of collaborations? Like, are you dealing with uh, other sports stores or hockey? T- like, do the teams locally know about you, or how do how do you connect? A lot of people. I mean, um, use our website. Uh, we've got lots of applications for funding. A lot of we want the teams to approach us. Uh, you know, uh, we meet every month. Uh, and, and we put together what we need to, to get through the next month. And it's a lot of night work. It's all volunteer. That I work my day job. And uh, and we go crazy at nighttime. A lot of nights, uh, my wife and I are both sitting up till about midnight uh, doing Empower Play stuff, getting things organized, getting things ready to go. So um, it's a constant uh, It's a constant thing. It's something I'm going to do for the rest of my life, uh, something that we want to stick around for uh, years to come. So we're always working on it. Um, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge time commitment, but we, uh, we, we think it's really important for the kids in the community. Yeah. So I didn't know, well, I was sort of answered one of my questions. So your wife's on board with this, obviously, uh, must be fantastic to have her support. Absolutely. Yeah. She's, uh, she's fantastic. She's the, the organizer of the world. So she, uh, <laughs> she brings everything together nicely. Um, you know, I'm a guy, so that's probably not my strength, but, uh, she is, uh, everything's organized with me. You leave it to Jenna, so it's uh, it's nice to have that uh, on our team. So, oh, that's fantastic. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm I'm looking forward to being there and being a part of the day. And uh, I think it's going to be a long day, but it'll be a lot of fun by the end of it. And uh, we need to get selling you some tickets, right? So that uh, yeah. cause at the end of the day, you want to do this to make some money to support the cause. Absolutely, and you know it's. Uh, like I said, Revelry.ca, uh, you can pay online, uh, grab tickets, make things nice and easy. Uh, and then at, at the door, we'll have uh, just pay to get in 20 bucks at the door, nice and easy. 
and uh, no worries at all. So you you, you want to come out? These are great bands that are playing. These are top notch talent. Uh, we we didn't cut any corners uh, when it comes to this tribute band stuff. So uh, we want to make sure everybody knows about it for sure. Yeah, right on. Anything else you want to throw in there before I let you go? No, just uh, thanks for all your support, Dave, for everything you do. We really appreciate it in the power play. And uh, and we hope to see everybody out there July 13th. It's a huge event. Even if you don't want to play volleyball, come out and watch. It's always a great time. So, um, you know, we're, we're out there listening to music. Uh, people are having some beverages. They're playing volleyball. They're enjoying Valley Axe. It's a great, uh, great venue. So uh, make sure you come out and take a look at what's going on anyway. Sounds good. Graham, thanks so much for connecting. And, uh, and let's touch base this week so we can work out some more of the details. About, uh, That's great, Dave. Thanks, man. All right. Graham Holmes from Empower Play Incorporated. Uh, I remember when he started this. And, yeah, it was, wow, was it five years already? And he's worked very, very hard. Had some ups and downs with it, but keeps pushing through because, uh, he, you know, he's got a strong belief uh, personally for this. So Full Petty Fever is going to be there performing. They've been in town before. I have saw them. I've saw them. I've seen them. <laughs> I've sawed them. I'm going to sod them again. Um, amazing tribute band, Full Petty Fever. And then Sandman, a Metallica tribute band as well. It's all happening on July the 13th. It is the Mick Jackson Asante tribute to summer. And you should go online to reverie.ca to get your tickets. Keep in mind as you're watching this, um, if you don't remember all the, uh, we're going to post all the links and everything after the show. So you'll be able to go to our Facebook page and find out all the information. Thanks again, Graham. Well, continuing on with sports, he's a, here's a guy who's busier than me, quite honestly. Uh, Jake Chersky is here today. How are you doing, Jake? I'm well. How are you? I appreciate you hanging around, buddy. You are a busy guy. You got Philly cheese dicks going on down there to, all the time, and that keeps you busy. Uh, you get involved with the Sarnia Sting, and then you just, if that wasn't enough, let's do football. <laughs> I think football uh, probably uses more of my time than the Sting does, but, uh, yeah, it's – you know what? It's it's busy, but I like being part of the community. It's a good community, so yeah. I like Graham. Yeah, you know, hats off to Graham for pulling that one out just out of nowhere. Um, I remember when he first got it started. And uh, Graham spent some time with the Imperials as well, and he's uh, he's a solid guy. So hats off to him, and I'm glad he's still kicking around after five years doing the right thing. Yeah, well, I couldn't agree with you more with Graham. He's he's uh, he's worked really hard at it, and and uh, when passion is the driving force, that that's what keeps things going. And that's I know for you, you're passionate about. I mean, your business, but your sports, and I know you're really passionate about um, the Sardinian Imperials football, and and. I guess you and Graham would have a lot in common. Uh, money is really needed for sports. Like it's expensive to buy them helmets. It's expensive to buy the helmets. It's expensive to keep buying the helmets though. Cause you get a lot of players that just refuse to return some of their stuff and you try uh-huh. to hunt them down and it's, uh, it's what we get at this level. It's, you know, uh, you know, they just, whatever they, it seems that society feels entitled sometimes. So you, you have to make a lot more money just to try to make up where you were already. Uh, yeah. That's the maddening thing. But you know what? Uh, like you said, it's passion. It's about uh, I get a chance to see upwards anywhere from 40 to 50 guys that I put a smile on their face every week because I'm allowing them to play football. And uh, that's what makes me happy. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's talk about the Imperials. Uh, not doing too bad, and and forgive me if I hit a sore spot here, but those the GTA team, man, they're tough. They they are. We're uh, we we're a little unfortunate. Uh, they're the only basically they're they're they've been our stumbling block. Uh, block. We've uh, we've probably been running a, a dynasty if it wasn't for GTA. So. Uh, but they're a good team. I mean, they're well-organized and, you know, they, uh, they do a lot of positives and they do all the right things. And, you know, it's, uh, we fall short. We're our, you know, our populations, you know, 67,000 plus Southwestern Ontario. But that being said, you know, you know, we have people that we're trying to draw from an hour away, two hours away. And, and they just don't really have that same, that same problem. And they have 7 million people to draw from. Right. Uh, so it, I mean, that helps it, but uh, I'm never going to complain about it. You just got to work harder and try to put the best team you can on the field. <laughs> well, 
work hard, right? I mean, there's certainly a word that uh, we can all understand when, especially, but uh, when it comes to football, like there is a lot of work involved in making this happen. And um, you've had some good success. Like last year was a pretty decent season and well, you've had some good players and some of those players have moved on to bigger things, right? Yeah, we have had some, uh, we've had some good players. We've had some great players and we've had uh, players in their prime of their lives and, We've had some some players that uh, we allow to play just so they can play football. Um, you know, their their skill skill set is not maybe at an elite level, but you know what? They give you a character. They give you they give you their hundred percent effort, and I think sometimes you have to reward that and you include them in that team uh, atmosphere. But um, you know, we we were like, for example. Uh, Dylan Grondon last year, he had, um, he had played with uh, Saskatchewan and then he felt him found himself uh, without a team uh, to go back to after a couple of years. Um, so I offered him, I said, Hey, you know, like, I know you're going to catch on with somebody else, but in the meantime, did you want to come out with us and uh, keep football ready? And uh, I loved being the fact that it was, it was nice to be able there to support a local kid. Uh, chasing his dream and whatnot and he ended up signing back with uh hamilton so uh hamilton tie cat so uh that was that was awesome it's it's good for us um will we ever make you know the sergeant imperial's name would it ever get in a in a in an interview probably not like i wouldn't i'd like to thank the imperials but uh you know we we try our best to be there for everybody and if uh if it's the fact that a player doesn't have a college team to go to or getting any exposure then uh, we're very proud to bring them on board. And if we can get them to the next level, we'd be happy to. But if, if this is the final level that they're going to play, um, you know, it's also nice to say or to hear, you know, the words, thank you very much. You gave me 10, 15 years, whatever it is. Um, you, you're giving me that time to, uh, to play football where I never would have been able to extend that career of mine. So thanks. And that's what means the most. Yeah. It's really um... – and, and it's a family thing, right? Like, I mean, you, you, you get to know these players and uh, some go off and do other jobs or whatever and don't play football anymore, but they, they've they always got that Sarnia Imperials to come back to, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I try to push the family thing. Uh, you know, uh, I reference the royal family a lot uh, <laughs> in, uh, in in private groups and whatnot. And I like to I like to believe that it's a family thing. And but uh, there's things that happen within families, you know, where brothers and sisters don't get along and they don't talk. Uh, <laughs> but at the end of the day, I like to uh, I like to always be there for for everybody that I possibly can. I mean, everybody has different issues with it. Everybody has, you know, um, different pains and ailments and different feelings get hurt. But uh, you know, you you try to be there. I've made I've made some decisions that I never wanted to make. And, uh, I opened the door back open for, uh, for people and, you know, welcome. You, you never left the family, but welcome back. And, um, I, I sincerely believe that. And I think once all the, once all the participants being players, staff, and when everybody actually understands that and buys into that, um, uh, that's when you're going to get a good team and, and going back to the GTA, that's what they have it's they they have a bunch of guys that are going to go to battle for one another they might fight they might argue but at the end of the day they're there for one another and they don't let that get in the way of football and you know sometimes uh there's there's players out there that they get hurt feelings and you know they just kind of fold up their tent and leave and it makes you kind of think sometimes you know like did they really want to be part of the family or were they part of there just for themselves so um, there's a whole lot, a lot of shapes and sizes and mentalities <laughs> and whatnot. And you got to kind of, you, you got to figure it all out between, you know, like I said, 50 and 60 people. It's, uh, it's kind of being their best friend, their dad, and, and sometimes the principal and the boss. And uh, right. you have a lot of hats to wear. Yeah, for sure. Well, uh, what's the crowds like out there? Because uh, I know you're always pushing, like, come on out, Sarnia, and support your Sarnia Imperials. I know they had a good season last year. Uh, and uh, coming into this year, um, are the fans there, or do you, do you got room for more? <laughs> we always got room for more. Um, <laughs> the, the fans are there; they're always there. Uh, we generally get 
Um, usually in the early part of the season, we generally get like two to 300. Um, and then near the end of the season, when we're ramping up for the playoffs, we'll float around 500 people to a game. Um, I think a few years back when we were, when we hosted the championship for the uh, league and uh, we were just under a thousand people and that's outstanding. And, and I, I'd love to see a thousand people, but you know, uh, it's Sarnia and it's festival weekend or it's this weekend and that weekend. There's lots to do. There's, in Sarnia. Going on. There's always something going on, but uh, like I say, I just, all I need is uh, I need you to drop by from seven o'clock to nine o'clock on Saturdays when we're at home, throw me $7. That's all I'm asking for. It's cheaper than any live sporting event. I think out there, even junior C hockey. And you're looking at some uh, top level athletes uh, that definitely play this game. And uh, especially in this league, and it's it's a lot of fun. Football's a lot of fun, and Sarnia Imperials make it even that much more. Yeah, and you've got support from. Uh, is is it broadcast on our local on your TV as well? Yeah, your TV covers it uh, as well. They have uh, ever since the onset from two thousand and six, and you know it's uh, it's amazing that they can do that, and you know it, it gives that availability to some people you know that can't make it out to events and. Uh, whether they're stuck at home, kind of what you were talking about with the parade thing earlier. Yep. Um, it allows those people to be able to still cheer us on. Yeah, you got to remember back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, when the Imperials were strong and everybody came to games. Um, but all those people are older now and, and maybe they're, you know, maybe they're stuck at home a little bit. And it's kind of nice that hopefully we can uh, put a smile on their faces too. Yeah. Well, you seem to be doing well with it. I mean, you know, I know you, uh, you know, I've had many conversations about a lot of things, but the Imperials always seem to come into those conversations at some point. And uh, there's a lot of organizing that goes on. There's a lot of training. And, and like I say, you wear a lot of these uh, hats, but um, you must have support too. You must have other coaches and other help or, or what's, what's that look like? Yeah, let me look for them. Yeah, <laughs> no, I have. I, I got a good, at least emotional support. I got a lot of friends that support me and say, I don't know why you're doing this, but uh, no, I got a great coaching staff and they take on quite a bit for me, uh, especially at practices and whatnot. And it takes away a little bit of that head coach role. Um, you know, I, I like being a GM and I try to lean on, you know, lean on the right people uh, for different coordinators like defense and offensive coordinator and whatnot. Um but no, it's, you know, we're always looking for help, we're out, whether it's game day help, selling merchandise and stuff like that. Uh, we're always looking for help. It's just a matter of, uh, it's it's tough to find and it's, it's tough to find people that are as passionate as you are. You don't, you don't want to find help just to fill the void, but you want to find help that they're actually going to help and make your workload a little bit less. And it's, you don't want to be picky. You don't want to be greedy. But for the well-being of the organization, uh, sometimes you have to make sure that you're you're trying to pick the right people that can commit, that can, uh, you know, give you those few hours a week and, and, and be there for you and do your best. Also, not just shrug your shoulders and, well, hey, I'm helping. Uh, you get that a lot. And um, the people that have come out for the past for us have always been top notch for us and we're pretty lucky to get those people. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Well, Jake, uh, you've done a fantastic job with the Imperials. I've, I've been watching you for a while, right? You know, I see you, what you put into it out there. But how do you find the time between, like, you have your own business down there. Here, we'll give the plug to uh, Philly Cheese Jake's at 988 Confederation Street. And and I, uh, how do you find the time? And then I got another question for you after that. Uh, you just you, you make the time. I know um, – I know my ex-wife wasn't happy with the time that I was finding apparently. And uh, <laughs> you just, you, you, you kind of make the time and uh, you just, you try to, you put yourself in positions, you know, like I, I sacrifice a lot. Um, I know we've talked about, Hey, can you help me do this? Can you help me? And it's like, yeah, you know what this I'm scheduling that one hour or that two hours for this. And you just, you try to be as organized as possible and you just try to do what you can. But um it's like an order of operation. You know, they, they say family comes first, but you know, my mom needs me. And the question is, do you need to go to the hospital or do you just need to talk? And so it's like, okay, well, I'll be there later if it's, <laughs> if you just need to talk, but it's, um, you know, there's Mom's a lot of way of making us feel guilty though, Jake. Oh, I totally. Yeah, I absolutely. I do. It's, I wish I could give more time to everything. 
um, and everyone that's around me, but uh, I've started something. I, I want to win a championship in Sarnia. That's at the end of the day. That's yep, nothing wrong with that. That's my goal. And, and I'm going to do whatever it takes to, uh, to be able to reward the city with uh, another football championship. And then, then we'll see what we, uh, what we can do from there. Yeah. Um, my next question was, uh, well, it's not really a question. It was more of a comment that, uh, of course I'm really partial to this, but I'm really proud of how much you live stream. You go Facebook live, uh, from like almost every day from the shop and you use that as part of your marketing. And then when you're out in the town and stuff. So, uh, I, I, like I say, I, I just think it's great when I see other businesses and other people using that, you know that tool that you got right there yeah. and you have a lot of fun with it, right? You're, you're pretty unique when it comes to uh, your marketing ideas. I, you know what? I, I like to stay me, if that makes sense. I just, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't want people to think that they're coming into something. So when you see me live, if you see me live, um, you see me live, I'm being Jake. Uh, so you come in, you're going to see the same guy. Um, I just, I, I think it's, I think it's nice and it's personable and, I mean, I know a lot of people come into my shop, not because we have great food, not because we have phenomenal pricing, but they come in because they get to sit with Jake and it's their little chance to get away from everything else, the hustle and bustle of life. And there's many times, I mean, you've seen it when you've been in here so many times, right. we're, we're talking about like, we're talking about family issues and we're talking about mental health issues and we're talking about divorces and you know, but as much as we're talking about the happy things in life and such and such is getting married and, and this person won that and this person loves that and this person's getting better and there's positives and negatives in life and it's just life and I, you still got to live it. Right. So I want people to know that, you know, even if they're down and out, not feeling well, there's a place in Sarnia that anybody can come at any point in time, no matter what your feelings are. And, and it's just, you know, there's a little hole in the wall at 988 Confederation street dive in and everything is going to be okay there's there's two places that i um like to visit and aside from the food and, and whatever but uh it's it's the conversation and the the space if you will and that is your place philly cheesesteaks and the other place honestly is uh, blackwater coffee downtown so i've got both ends of town covered yeah. and uh i can have good conversation honest conversation um disagree uh at times as we you and i do sometimes too or no you don't know what you're talking about uh, <laughs> you know? but uh it's good to have those spaces and i know uh, uh speaking of your business you've worked really hard at, at, at keeping that going and you i know we've had those conversations have had your ups and downs but you're like five years in now too aren't you yeah just past actually august this coming up august will be six years for philly cheese jakes and uh we're uh we're plugging away, baby. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, Jake, I'll be in to see you soon. And, uh, of course, you know, the, the BOI always likes to come along with me. Sometimes Jennifer and him have to fight it out who gets to come. I yeah. said, I can't bring both of you. <laughs> well, maybe one day, you know, what? my treat. We bring both of them one day. This way no one can <laughs> There you go. And I appreciate you do. Uh, you take really good care of us uh, whenever we pop in there as well. So uh, we'll be in for our, our, our weekly visit very soon. Sounds great. Thanks, Jake. Thanks so much, Dave. You're doing a great job. Thanks, man. Jake Chersky, a uh, man of many hats. And this one specifically, we were talking about Cernia Imperials football. And you can go online and see the Cernia Imperials football schedule. And they would love to have you down there. As Jake said, it's only 7 bucks. You're looking for something different to do? Well, there it is. You've got it. Football right here in Cernia, Norm Perry Park, Cernia Imperials football. And uh, I know Jake and the team would really appreciate the support as well. Something different, right? Try it. Even if you've never been to a football game, you got nothing better to do. Go down there, grab a coffee, and just sit and have some. It's a lot of social time, too. All right. I want to say thank you to all of you for watching here today. And thanks to all of my guests, my dear friend, Dom Fernandez, Talking MS. Check out his Facebook page and learn more about multiple sclerosis. Or maybe you know someone uh, who could use that space on the Internet, uh, Talking MS, to uh, learn more about how you can help them as well. So thanks, Dom, for that. And then, of course, my friend Graham Holmes from Empower Play Incorporated. He's got... Uh, Full Petty Fever and Sandman uh, tribute bands coming on July the 13th. Or if you want to put a team in for volleyball as well, you can do that. That's happening on Valley Axe. You can go to revelry.ca to find out all the information or just go to Empower Play Inc. 
on Facebook. And then, of course, the one, the original, the unique Jake Chersky uh, from 988 Confed, Philly Cheese Steaks. I don't mind giving them plugs. And um, Sarnia Imperials Football. That's it. Wow. We got through that one. It's over before you know it. That's all the time I got for you this week, everybody. Have a great week and an even better weekend. And I will see you next time right here in the show. Bye for now.